having learned the development of neural tube and spinal cord we will now learn the development of the brain brain develops from that part of neural tube which lies cephalic to the fourth somate this cephalic part of neural tube shows three dilatations known as brain vesicles these are forebrain vesicle or prosencephalon midbrain vesicle or mesencephalon and hindbrain vesicle or telencephalon these three vesicles are separated by two circular constrictions the lateral wall of forebrain vesicle shows two evaginations known as optic bulb after some times the ventrolateral part of the wall of the forebrain vesicle so another two evagination which forms the cerebral rudiments so forebrain is now having two parts the anterior part or telencephalon which includes cerebral hemisphere and the median portion sandwiched between two cerebral hemisphere is diencephalon which includes the optic bulb the cavity of forebrain vesicle will persist as a third ventricle of brain cavity of the cere uh, cerebral hemisphere will form the lateral ventricles and the point of the commencement of the cerebral diverticula will form the interventricular foramen of monroe the cavity of midbrain will be narrowed out to form the cerebral aqueduct the hindbrain vesicle is divided into two part the metencephalon is the upper part which will lead to development of pons and cerebellum myelencephalon is a lower part which will lead to development of medulla oblongata the cavity of the hindbrain vesicle will form the fourth ventricle at the junction of midbrain and hindbrain there is a constriction which is known as isthmus rhombencephalon the wall of three primitive brain vesicles will be having three layers the ependymal zone mental zone and marginal zone the wall of midbrain and hindbrain are divided by sulcus limitans into ventral basal lamina and dorsal alar lamina the basal lamina contains motor neurons whereas alar lamina contains sensory neurons we will now discuss flexors of brain three flexors affect the primitive brain these are cephalic flexor cervical flexor and pontine flexor the cephalic and cervical flexor are concave ventrally whereas pontine flexor is concave is convex ventrally the cephalic flexor appears during the head fold of the embryo during which the forebrain vesicles folds ventrally at the cephalic end of the notochord so that floor of floor of forebrain and hindbrain uh, come to lie at the same plane the cervical flexor affects the junction of hindbrain and spinal cord and make a right angled bend between them this cervical flexor appears during fourth and fifth week of the embryonic life during the seventh week when the embryonic head undergo extend extension this cervical flexor diminish and gradually disappear pontine flexor bends with ventral convexity during sixth week due to this the roof plate stretches out and form a diamond shape outline alar lamina diverges alar lamina diverges from each other and they come to lie in almost same plane as the basal lamina this explain why the floor of fourth ventricle is rhomboid shape in outline 